Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of English Lessons with Grammar Man. Coming to you from Progressive English, the language school in Zurich, Switzerland. Now today I have a video on the past tense and all four aspects of the past tense. And at the end of the video, I will give you details of how you can download your free cheat sheet from the website. So be sure to check that out. It's a, uh, a great cheat sheet with timelines and signal words and yeah, it's a great uh, learning aid. So be sure to check that out at the end of the video. Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to talk about the past simple, the past continuous, the past perfect and the past perfect continuous. All right, the first one, past simple. We form past simple with the subject plus the past simple form of the verb, the second column. Okay, uh, remember the subject is just who or what does the verb. And we use past simple for a completed past action. An example, I walked to the shop yesterday, completed past action. Uh, you can also use the past, act, uh, the past simple to join past actions together in the order that they occurred. An example, I finished work and then I walked to the beach and went for a swim. Okay, all completed past actions in the order that they happened. All right, so yeah, so far these two examples have been quite short actions. We can also use past simple for a longer action. An example, uh, I lived in Brazil for two years. I don't live in Brazil anymore, it's a completed past action. Okay, to make negative sentences, we add the verb did plus not, normally contracted to didn't, and we add that uh, before the main verb. I didn't walk to the shop. You will notice that we don't say, I didn't walked to the shop. We don't need to conjugate the main verb in the negative, because the auxiliary did is already in the past tense. So the positive sentence, sentence, John walked to the shop yesterday, and the negative, John didn't walk, the base verb, John didn't walk to the shop yesterday. Okay, and with questions, we add the auxiliary, the auxiliary verb, uh, did, before the subject. As we usually do with questions, we swap the order of the subject and the auxiliary verb. So it becomes, did John walk to the shop yesterday? And of course, we can add question words. Um, uh, why did John walk to the shop yesterday? When did John walk to the shop yesterday? Etc. Etc. Um, okay, yeah, one more thing. When we use to be conjugated with the past simple. An example, Sam was hungry. He is not hungry anymore. It fits the formula. Subject plus past simple. Sam was. Was is the past form of am. Okay. And it's a completed past event. But you will notice this time, as I said, we are using to be conjugated. And it's the main verb in the sentence. Okay. So with this structure, when we make it negative, we do not need to add an auxiliary verb did. Okay, so it just becomes Sam was hungry in the negative is Sam was not hungry. Okay, and it's the same with questions. We don't add an auxiliary. It's just uh, was Sam hungry or why was Sam hungry? Okay, we don't need to add did when we uh, use was or were uh, in the negative in the yeah, in the negative for the past simple. Okay, so we'll move on to past continuous. Now we form this aspect with subject plus was, were, and plus the verb ing. And we use this structure to show an action that was in progress at a specific time in the past. Okay, an example, I was watching TV at 8 o'clock last night. Okay, so we, uh, yeah, we often use this structure to show a longer action that was in progress in the past. And it was during the long action 
another shorter action happened. An example, I was watching TV last night when the phone rang. Okay, so I was doing a longer action. I was on the couch, I was watching TV, and then the phone rang. A shorter action happened. Okay, and you'll notice the longer action we used to pass continuous. I was watching TV, and then the short action, the phone rang, is in the past simple. Okay, it's quite a common structure, and we often use the words while or when to link the two actions, the longer action and the shorter action. Okay, while and when are signal words for the interrupted past continuous. We call that the interrupted past continuous. There's a, a past continu ac continuous action, and during that action, a shorter action happens. Okay, and another uh, one last way that we use the past continuous is we can use it to show multiple actions happening at the same time. Okay, they are both uh, fairly long actions. There isn't a, a, um, a specific long, long action and then a short action. There's two actions happening at roughly the same time. An example, I was studying while my wife was making dinner. Okay, so both actions took around the same length of time. They were both happening at the same time. So we use the past continuous for both the actions. I was studying while my wife was cooking dinner. So that brings us to the past perfect. Now we form past perfect with subject plus had and plus the past participle, the third form of the verb. And we use the, uh, the past perfect to sequence past actions to show a completed past action that happened before something else in the past. Okay, so it's not in the order of occurrence. It's different to the past simple. So, um, yes, yeah, the best is to show you an example. All right, so we had already started cooking when our guests arrived. Okay, this means that when our guests arrived, it's in the past simple, our guests arrived. We had already started cooking. Okay, so it happened before something else in the past. Completed past action, we had started cooking when our guests arrived. If we had used past simple, the meaning would be completely different. The same sentence in the past simple would be, we started cooking, we started cooking, when our guests arrived. This means we started cooking when or after our guests arrived. So it has the opposite meaning. Uh, okay, one last example of that, the past perfect. I didn't have any money for a bus ticket because my wallet had been stolen. Okay, so I didn't have any money in the past for a bus ticket. This is now, I didn't have any money for a bus ticket. That's the past simple because my wallet had been stolen. Okay, it happened before, completed past event, before something else in the past. And finally, we have the past perfect continuous aspect. We form the past perfect continuous aspect with subject plus had plus been plus verb ing. And this is mainly used to show the duration of an event that continued up until a specific point in the past. It stops before now. Very important, okay? The present perfect continues up until now. The past perfect stops before now. Okay, an example. I had been dating Claudia for three years when we got married. Okay, so this is now. I had been dating Claudia for three years when we got married. So this is past simple, we got married, and before that, I'd been dating her for three years. Okay, so it stops before, it shows a duration, three years of an event that stops before now. Um, yeah, another example, I stopped for a rest. I stopped, so this is now, I stopped for a rest, past simple, because I had been driving for so long. 
Okay, I had been driving is the past perfect continuous. The uh, duration is so long and it stops before now. Okay. Um, yeah, the other reason that we use the past perfect continuous is to show yeah, a progressive action that took place before something else and it can be used to show cause and effect. Uh, for example, the road was wet because it had been raining. Okay, this is now. Uh, the road was wet. It's not wet anymore, so past simple, the road was wet because it had been raining. Okay, so cause and effect. Uh, past, past perfect continuous is showing an event that happened before something else in the past to show cause and effect. What a mouthful. All right, it's not as hard as I probably made it out uh, to be. The cheat sheet will help to simplify it and so will practice, okay? But it's, it's, uh, it's not that bad. All righty. So, yeah, in saying that, that's, that wraps up all the tenses. That's a quick overview. I'm going to have some more videos where I'll go into a little bit more detail on just one or two tenses and compare different tenses so you can see the differences. But that's a nice little overview of all of the past tense. Uh, yeah, like I said, be sure to log on to the website and check out the cheat sheet, which should uh, help to simplify things a bit for you. Um, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, support the channel uh, if you find the information, information useful. And yeah, good luck with all your English goals and life goals. Thanks a lot, everybody. Cheers.